in Affinity 3, you can now apply hatch designs to any shape. But also, what you can do with these hatch designs, such as this, you can fill it with an image. And I'm going to show you how in this video. This is for Affinity 3, the latest version of Affinity, PC or Mac. So let's just remove that. First thing to do, just go over here and I'm going to go with the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a rectangle. And it's currently filled with the current swatch, which is this hatch design. Now, most likely you will have this. So colors and maybe something like orange or red, depending on the color set. All you need to do is go from the swatches, go down here, go to hatches. In hatches, you can see you've got a load of different options here. And I'm just going to select this one. Nice crisscross pattern design. So got this. If you can't find the swatches panel, you can find it in window and down to general and swatches. So it's tucked away there. So there it is swatches. Now it doesn't look great at the moment because it's very, very thin lines to actually add the image. It's really nice to obviously make that slightly bigger inside there. And what you need to do is just go here, just go here to the fill tool. Once you've got that, you've got all these options. Now, if you can't see this panel, you need to go to view, context toolbar and show. Well, once you've got this, you can just go down here and you can increase this. So just, this is the width here and I'm just going to increase it. So you get a, get a bit more substance to it so you can see it like that and you can manipulate it further you can modify here the scaling so if you want like that change that and also you can change the angle as well okay so you've got this design there is an option here along the end bake appearance which sort of seems to be not very useful but it does it's very useful so you can just click there bake appearance so just click that and now what you've got is you've got let's just go to the layers so you can actually see it so there's the layers You've got these lines. These lines can be manipulated. You can still modify them. You can just go here to the no tool. So here's no tool. And these lines can be modified using this no tool. So there's no tool there. However, in this case, what I want to do is I want to go a slight step further. And that's to convert the curves, to convert these design, this line into curves. Because I can't do anything with this at the moment. It's just strokes. So right click and you've got options here. You can see here, expand stroke. So I'm going to convert that now into something that I can fill. So expand stroke, you need to right click. So right click and you'll get all these options and you can do other things for picture frame. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for expand stroke. So expand stroke and now when I said convert to curves, it was already a curve. What I meant was expand stroke. Okay, so we got curves there now. So it is finally cool curves, not lines, as it says there. And you can see you've got this, which can now be filled with an image. However, one thing that's slightly changed in this version, and I have yet to find it, is the feature for the pasting. How you can paste it or work with pasting the images. Hopefully I will find that feature, but I haven't found it yet. So if you know where it is, please let me know in the comments below. Because normally it was just up here. Okay, what you can now do, and I'm just going to go to an image. So here's an Adobe stock image. Could be any image, of course. Doesn't have to be this. And then go to edit and copy. And then go here to the image itself. And with this selected, make certain the curves here are selected. Needs to be selected here in the layers panel, which you can find in window and down to general and oh, let's just see layers. What you can do is go to edit and paste and you go paste inside. So if you want to paste it inside those curves, do that. And now you can see you've got that. And what you can then do is you can then move it as long as it's selected here, not this. This needs to be selected. This needs to be in blue. Anytime you want to work with something, make certain that's selected and then move that. You can then resize it. Let's just make that a bit bigger. And it can be like filled with anything. It doesn't have to be filled with this image. It could be filled with any image, maybe text, maybe gradients, a whole range of different things that are possible to be filled. Now, what you can also do is you can go here to curves, select that now. Now I've positioned it. What you can then do is with this selected, I can then go down here to effects. So just click here, effects. And now you can see this panel, layer effects, and you can go for 3D. So 3D, let's just 
increase that. And you can also go beveling boss, etc. Out of shadow, all these sort of things. Some better than others. Oh, there it is. And you can just move this around. But I'm just going to close it now. And now you can see this lattice design that you've got with that image. And you can do this with any of the swatches you've got here. Okay, now we've got this. What you can also do is you can go here to the layers. You've got this one. You can simply just go up here to the rectangle and you can rasterize the whole thing. So right click and I'm just going to go down here to rasterize. You don't have to, but you can rasterize it into a single pixel layer, which you can then, of course, manipulate. You can modify this so you can do that. Hold down the ultra option key. Duplicate that design. You can see then you've got that. You've got two and you can then resize it, move it around, whole range of different things. Maybe apply effects, maybe go up to pixel, go to filters and maybe go to distort and then say deform. So let's just click and add. Got Here's the deform panel and you can then simply distort that design, modify that. It's always a pity there's no pin feature where you can sort of pin it to the edges there so it doesn't move as well, but click apply and then you've got that sort of design. Okay, let's go and do another one. Let's just go over here and ellipse tool. And I'm just going to fill this one again. It's filled, of course, with the same swatch. So let's just go to swatches here. And again, exactly the same window and all the various options down here in general. There they are. I'm just going to select this one. Just click there. And you can see this one. And now you might not have that one. But if you've got it, or something like this, you can then modify it further again. Just go over here because you sometimes have to do this. You can see the scale factor is quite large sometimes. So just go there and just let's re reduce that down. And as you reduce it down, you'll see you get the line designs appearing. Now, for some weird reason, I didn't get the red there. But you can see you've got white there. Now, you might, if you want, you can always simply just click here. Just click the white here. That's the fill for this, the color here. I don't know why it didn't apply it, but anyway, it didn't. But what you can do is just go up here and just click this. And now when you click that, you've got no fill. So you can actually see through to the background and with this line design. And then once you've got that again, you can do exactly the same as you've got before. You can then manipulate this. Now you've got some dots. So if you want to create some designs with dots, instead of just the crisscross lines and things, you can use these. You can, of course, manipulate it further by clicking here. And you've got the lines here. You can create multiple types of different designs, change the rotation, etc. change the various dashes and spaces, which are these dots here. So we've got this. And I'm just going to boost this up, maybe a bit bigger. Let's, you can see all that, maybe go the other way. And you can just say, I want to keep the structure here, so just don't push it too far. And I'm going to keep black there. It doesn't particularly matter. I'm going to go with bake appearance now. So bake appearance, I've now converted it. And now if I go back to layers, exactly the same as before, you've got this. You've got the structure here, you've got the layers here, ellipse, you've got the outer lips there that constrains it. You've got the group, and then you've got the lines. And you can manipulate these lines. You can just go here, no tool, and you can see you've got the lines here. You can just tweak individual. You might want to move some of these. Up to you, just tweak them. Now, you can't recolor this, you can't change it <clears throat> because it's all one single path, lines. It's not separate, so you can't do that. However, we can do exactly the same as we did before. Again, over here with lines selected here, you can then right click and you can just go down here to expand stroke. So exactly the same, expand stroke. And now you have got this curve. It's still all one structure. And again, exactly the same before. You can go to, say, this image or any other image. Maybe you want a gradient. All those sorts of things can be filled instead of an image like that. So let's just select another part of the image here, something like that. Again, copy it. So edit and copy. And then go down over here. Make certain the curve is selected. That's the key thing. Go to edit and then paste and then inside. And then, of course, Make certain this is selected. You need always to select the thing you want to whip manipulate. And then go over the move tool. That's a key thing. Move tool to move it. And then just shift it up there. So you've got the obviously the eyes there or whatever you've obviously brought in. 
And then you can use this. You can manipulate this. You don't need to keep this thing because you can apply, say, effects. Maybe you decide, you know what? I want some color, different color. Well, you can add adjustment layers. Long as that's selected there, let's just go to over here to pixel, a new adjustment layer. And you can go down here and let's just go for recolor. And then you've got that. So the, there you've got the curves, you've got that in between it. So that one's just above the pixel layer. And you can then modify the hue. So maybe you might want to go with a green, say. Also, you might go for different blends. So you can go for dark and multiply, something like that. A nice visual effect like that. And now, once you've done that, you can close it. Now you can go back to it at any point. You can always just go click there and bring up or double click. Sometimes it's click, sometimes it's double. <laughs> I never know. Whatever it is, you can get access to this again and you can manipulate it again if you want to change the color. Well, what you can also do is you've got this ellipse. You can manipulate that. You move this around now. But of course, what you can always do is always you can just go here, click here, rectangle tool and just add another rectangle behind. Gain. I don't want this swatch. What I want is the actual just solid color. So go over here, fill color, fill tool, make certain that's selected. And instead of hatch, just go up here, solid. And I'm going to go and change that to just click there. So that's the color that I want to use. And I'm just going to click here. And I'm just going to over there because I want that green there. So now I've got that. I can now then just go down here and I'm just going to put this behind. So this rectangle, you always drag it down. So if it's right at the top, you want it to be right at the bottom, you can simply just drag it down. Make certain you put it down there and you've got it behind. And that's not inside the ellipse. So you, it's outside. You can put it, if you want to, into the ellipse. And then you can manipulate that there. And you can see now you've got this lovely visual effect, the green. Maybe you might think, you know what, maybe slightly darker. So let's just change the color a little bit maybe from that so there close i think that looks quite a nice visual design that you could use maybe in a in a booklet or something so you've got say an image like that and you've got this lovely background but you've also got this sort of dot and line very futuristic very 60s i say futuristic but it's a 60s futuristic look i think and again of course you can always go back to this ellipse and you can resize it you can just drag this up maybe make it bigger like that fill it there and just create some there and maybe add some text around the edges, around the side, maybe have some text there. And you've got straight away a great sort of cover, I think, for a, sort of a book or something. I think that would be quite a nice visual, maybe some amazing text with it as well. I hope you found this of interest. Any questions and thoughts about this hatch feature with obviously images, but it, as mentioned, it could be anything else. It doesn't need to be just images. It could be gradients, etc or maybe hatch designs as well within hatch designs and so on. So there's infinite possibilities there. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, thoughts, please let me know. Bye.